Namaste. Hi, I want to talk today about uh, the Parliament of the World's Religions. Uh, basically, I want to address a question by Jessica Crew, who said she knows that I, I write a lot about interfaith stuff, and do I know something about the Parliament? Well, I have to tell you folks, I did not pay for Jessica to ask that question, but I'm glad she did, uh, because I need to talk about this stuff. So, you'll notice that today I'm wearing my hat from Nepal, from Kathmandu. Uh, I was in uh, Asia the summer of 2012, and while I was in Kathmandu, um, I was asked to speak at Save Nepal, which is a um, residential facility for teenage girls who had been rescued from human trafficking, and they were learning vocational skills, educational skills, getting health care, um, and really preparing to, to launch into a, um, a life that they could be proud of. They asked me to come and speak about um, suicide and self-harm, so pretty darn serious. Like I said, these were um, serious girls. And afterwards, they presented me with this, with this hat. Now, you'll notice that it's not even, um, that it actually uh, has one side, higher than the other, and that is to uh, represent the Himalayas, the mountain range, the Himalayas. Anyway, I wear this hat and it reminds me of walking around Kathmandu and seeing all the shrines and temples, uh, Hindu, and people going up to them and ringing bells and going inside and looking, doing what looks like they're crossing themselves. They're not, but they're certainly going into to a blessing. Uh, and and then uh, taking the uh, the incense and it almost looks like a, a smudge pot from a Native American uh, and some of the uh, statues uh, you know the animals that the gods would use for travel uh, remind me of uh, the statues that Aaron made that really got Moses angry and so superficially it reminded me of the Old Testament there was lots of things there that seem very uh, familiar. Uh, I also attended a Catholic church that had been bombed uh, two Christmases prior to that and uh, you sit on the floor at, uh, it looked like um, almost like you were at a Buddhist temple. The architecture and the artwork and the chandeliers were all uh, in a style that looked very much like Tibet. It kind of looked like uh, if the Dalai Lama converted to Catholicism, this is the church he would go to. Uh, there were, you know, um, it's it was the last Hindu kingdom uh, prior to um, the king being assassinated by his nephew, and so um, ninety some percent of the people identify as Hindu, but it's also the birthplace of the historical Buddha, and so most of the people there consider themselves Hindus and Buddhists both. There is how, and, and there are these stupas all over the place, so there's lots of Buddhist places to worship as well. Um, but there are also a very distinct type of Buddhism there. Um, there's a, a, a Tibetan presence, um, Tibetan refugee settlements that are 60 years old, uh, one of the most holy shrines for Tibetans outside of Tibet is in Kathmandu. And so you have this rich um, religious diversity in, in Nepal. And while Nepal is not where I started my journey to uh, of interfaith and appreciating um, other religions, I think I've always been that way, it was one of the places where things came to fruition. Um, I, I spent a day um, uh, where I actually uh, was in the, the uh, mansion where a, a Hindu goddess was, uh, this young child who uh, had uh, um, taken on the the spirit of the goddess, and that was a uh, that was when I realized I was in a very different world. Well, I appreciate um, this religious diversity because um, the world's hurting. You know, in in uh, Burma, uh, Muslims are being slaughtered by Buddhists in. The state of Orissa, uh, Catholic uh, Christians are being um, in India are being attacked. Uh, in uh, India, next to Burma, uh, Muslim uh, Indians are being attacked, and so all over the world, um, 
people are, are hurting other people in the name of a loving God. And so that makes the parliament of the world's religions even more important. So, Jessica, what is the parliament of the world's religions? Well, that takes a little history. In uh, 1893, uh, during the Columbian Exposition or World's Fair in Chicago, uh, they had the first parliament of the world's religions. And it wasn't every religion. Native Americans weren't there. Uh, Baha'is were there for the first time in America. Um, Sikhs were not there, or Sikhs, however you would say that. Um, but lots and lots of religions, people who probably wouldn't be in the same room together, were in the same room there. And uh, it was the introduction of uh, transcendental meditation, transcendentalism to, to the West. So it was important. So as they got close to 100 years later in 1988 in Chicago, a group got together and formed the Council for the Parliament of the World's Religions to mark the anniversary with another parliament. And so in um, 1993, uh, the second parliament in, uh, of the world's religions was held in Chicago at the Palmer House. And then since then, it's been very, very active. Um, it clearly is, is uh, meeting a, a need. And so in 2004, they met in uh, Barcelona, Spain, 2009, Melbourne, Australia, 2014, Brussels, Belgium, and 2015, this October, from October 15th to 19th, they'll be in Salt Lake City. There'll be 10,000 people, 80 nations represented, 50 uh, faiths. And so um, it'll be dramatic. They'll be talking about, or they'll be dancing and drums and chanting and, you know, very beautiful uh, there'll be all sorts of prayers, but there will also be breakout sessions and uh, multiple foci. So they'll be talking about the status of women in the world, of uh, the inequality of the distribution of wealth in the world and what that means, uh, and global warming. And so each parliament has a different focus, and then they take it back to their nations, their denominations, their NGOs, and... Uh, uh, work to get the people to move in the direction of the of, of their faiths. So, um, Jessica, I am a, an ambassador for the Council of, of the Parliament of the Word Religion. So my job in Fort Wayne, you mentioned that I I do this blog. Well, my job is to get the word out for the Council. So uh, this blog will have a link to it. Uh, so that you could register. This would be a good time to register. It will be uh, some real savings. Uh, if you're thinking of presenting, the deadline for presenting is uh, March 15th, so there will be a link for that. Um, I will continue the blog. I also need to do a uh, pre-parliament event, and so I met with Dan Schwartz at Wunderkammer, and April 11th we'll uh, have a Faithing in the Heartland uh, event. And so hopefully we'll have people from all different faith communities in Fort Wayne there to beat drums, chant, dance, share food, prayers, uh, and just really kind of brag about their, their uh, faith and their contribution to our larger community. And then I need to also go to different houses as well and, and talk, to, uh, talk to them about uh, the parliament. So that's the the parliament. This is the the journey is uh, by getting the word out and also enjoying uh, the diversity that is Fort Wayne. We really are not just the city of churches. We really have become the city of faiths, and uh, it's pretty exciting. So looking forward to working with uh, just so many different people, including you, Jessica. And uh, so thanks for asking. Namaste.